hello, it is Wednesday, June 10th, and just thought I'd give you a little update for what's happening in the craft room. I'm in a sort of finish my works in progress type of mode. I don't really have the brain space to start new things at the moment, so it's sort of a roundup of things that I'm trying to finish in the craft room these days. As you can see here, uh, my case for my little singer so handy machine is not yet finished. Uh, we are taped and ready for staining. I'm waiting for the stain to come in for that. Um, th this is not advisable, by the way. Everywhere tells you to take the hardware off. I just don't want to have to deal with trying to replace the hardware because this stuff is super old and I will end up breaking it if I remove it. So <laughs> I'm just kind of going around it. And since it's a small box, I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. But I'm waiting for my stain and top coat to come in for that. Uh, I have the two cloth panels finished. I will be stitching those on with this undyed crochet cotton um, through the holes that already exist in the cardboard of the box. So I'm going to try to fit these old panels into the insides just so that they're still a part of the piece. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'll just cover the inside with fabric where all the stitching is. And below this tripod, there we go, is this plying project. I don't think I've talked about it. This blue cone right there is a cone of, I believe it's cotton, that's what I determined from a burn test, uh, singles that a friend of my sister's picked up at a closing mill. Um, she had picked up a whole bunch of cones of stuff and they ended up going everywhere. I did try to machine knit with this as it is, but the twist of the single is enough that the pieces that I tried to knit skewed wildly. Uh, it was clearly not meant to be a single. So what I'm doing is I'm plying it as a three ply, which I started doing just to maintain and like build up the strength in my shoulder again after my shoulder pain, but something that's, you know, real quick and easy to, to start and stop and doesn't require a lot of drafting motions with that right shoulder since it's kind of haphazardly being plied. Some parts of it are a tighter ply than others. Putting this into a hank and, and washing it will help set that skein, so I'm not too worried about it. This right here is a pile of things that are going to be frogged. Um, I went through my winter wear, kind of packing everything away, and these were items that I just don't really wear. I mean, I love this alpaca, but it can be used better. Uh, this was a very early knitting project, and alpaca is not great for cables. It's very hard to see them. Um, these are just tools that need to get put away. These sort of slipper socks, not great. They need a really hefty wash, and I just never use them. Uh, this scarf, while I love this yarn, this isn't the best use of this yarn. You cannot see the cables, and I don't really wear scarves. I'm more likely to wear cowls or shawls, so I can make this up into something different. Uh, and then this machine knit shawl uh, for my machine knitting shawl shapes projects. This, because of the gauge of my standard machine, this is just too small for me to comfortably wear. Uh, I mean, somebody else could wear it, but I, I do want to play with this sort of gradient yarn more. Uh, I think I'll just pull this out and use it for another one skein shawl project, you know, hand knit at a gauge that's much looser than this. 
It worked great for samples, but it's not something that I wear. So those need to be taken care of. Scoot you over here. This is a project that I have resurrected from the dead. I was working on this when I, my shoulder really started to hurt, so this has been languishing for a couple of months and has been languishing for a long time before then because it is such a pain to stitch this by hand. What is this? This is a rug that I'm making out of um, jelly roll strips of qu quilting cotton and inside is a thin strip, like a two inch strip of cotton batting. The pattern that I used for this, which I'll find and include in the show notes, tells you to do it by machine and zigzag across. My old Singer machine, old Singer machine, my Singer machine, which is currently not functional, um, had a timing issue where it couldn't do zigzags. And then I got my grandma's uh, Janome. And while it can do zigzags, it is very difficult to get the zigzags through essentially four layers of fabric and two layers of batting consistently enough to keep going. So I decided I'm going to hand sew it. However, I went about it very naively, um, thinking that I had to stitch the final stitches and coil it all in one go. And it lightning flashed in my brain a few days ago, uh, baste it, and then do all the tiny stitches. So I'm in the process of basting it. I did take an iron to what I had already done, which makes me very happy because it was not flat at all. <laughs> so now it's much more flat. I'm basting the coil. It's a rainbow. Uh, a little appropriate that it came back into my brain during Pride Month. Um, I have now on my little to-do board a tracker so that as I finish each color basting, I do a little black bar at the bottom, and then as I finish each color stitching, I can cross it off, and hopefully that will keep me on track to keep working on it. Other items of business. So, just scoot in here. I have finished this cardigan uh, that I did by machine. Is it perfect? No. Uh, <laughs> but it is wearable. I have worn it. Um, when the evenings have gotten chilly, um, because Connecticut weather is all over the place. Um, the knitted border was a much better choice. I like how it looks. Um, this yoke still doesn't lie quite right. And I'm sure that's just because I was fudging my decreases all over the place. The pattern that I used uh, by Susan Guayumi basically used the same, ju just said decrease by a third every time you decrease. So the exact numbers weren't there. And I didn't bother doing out the math. She gave you the machine knitting technique to decrease by a third, but because the numbers didn't always evenly go in, and you needed to not do knit togethers on a seam edge. There, there was a lot of fumbling around when I would get to the end of a row. So that's just a matter of learning how to do things better for me and actually, you know, pay attention to what my patterns say. Um, but overall, it's definitely a wearable sweater and one that I have liked uh, throwing on um, in the evenings if it's dropped down temperatures. So I'm happy with this. Um, I only have this much of the knit picks that I pulled out of the original sweater. Um, and I have a lot more of this left, so that makes me happy. I 
I also finished a machine knit hat. Um, I have done a machine knit hat that I've drafted myself before, and this is basically the exact same pattern with a different um, card for my brother KH836E machine. Um, it's a smaller brim on the hat, but it fits fine. I did run out of black yarn at the very tippy top, but what are you going to do? Um, when I do the hats on machine, instead of doing eight decrease points, I do four decrease points with a center double decrease, so it has like a square. That's just easier for me to math. Um, having four decrease points rather than eight um, because when I do it by machine I have to offset the decreases from the seam edge because on machine it's knit flat um, so it's just easier for me to have four points of reference where to do out the math instead of eight um, but that's busted up some stash which is nice um, I have to record all my Ravelry notes and things for this. I have done a little bit more tablet weaving. I don't believe this one was done when I last uh, spoke to you, but um, again, you can tell that I basically threaded this wrong because um, the wrong side is much clearer, but you can see how this would look if I had used the correct threading, so I'm not worried about this sample. I redid this sample, and when I did, I went back to the threading portion of the card weaving book by Candace Crockett. I will grab it out of my bookshelf here. Card weaving by Candace Crockett. I revisited the section on how you thread cards or how she threads the cards and I was doing it backwards. I was coming at it from the wrong direction. Um, I was threading from the furthest point down through the card. She threads them from closest point to you up through the cards. So I wrote myself a little note. Hello! I'm filming, so I'm waiting for you to leave. So I wrote myself a little note so that I know um, which direction to thread going forwards, and when I did thread it that way, it did come out clearly uh, when before it had come out this way. So I've solved my threading problem. Hooray! These are waiting. <laughs> Because I have to do a, a little bit of just clean up and, you know, machine TLC with my sewing machine because I've been using it a lot lately. Um, I did borrow a Taylor ham from my sister Gabby a while back. Um, she has since retrieved uh, that piece of equipment and I need that if I'm going to go forward with my sewing, pressing seams on curved edges. Oh, phone. So what I have here are templates for a tailor ham and a sausage. So I think I found these patterns on craftsy.com um, as free patterns, but uh, you can download them straight from her blog. The link to will be down below. I went over there to check to see if there was any specific directions. Um, she does have more information on the blog than in the pattern download, such as what to stuff these with. Uh, I guess it's traditionally sawdust, but I'm going to use uh, cotton fabric scraps and just pack them in real tight. So that's my plan with these guys. Um, just using up some of my naturally dyed fat quarter experiments for that so that I can press curved seams again. And then once I oil my machine and all that good stuff, I'm going to be revisiting this work in progress basket. Um, this is fabric from my vest that I will be using to put in welt pockets. 
um, the vest I made for my sister's wedding. There is a quilt in here uh, that I have uh, several squares to finish. So I want to have the quilt square motifs done with their borders attached so that they're ready to prep for uh, quilting as you go. Um, they will be quilted each motif separately and then joined with sashing. I will probably need a break from this once I get it prepped for quilting as you go. We'll see how my momentum goes. Um, I have to wind up this yarn to get it ready for um, sampling. And that looks like it might be it for the craft room itself at the moment. I have been doing some knitting, which I'll show in a later clip, uh, but I've gotten to a point where if I do a little bit of knitting every day on one thing, then I see progress. So I'm kind of monogamously going through my works in progress at the moment. So you'll see that later. Hello, this is Adrian. hopefully wrapping up this video for June. I haven't started any of the editing for it yet, so I don't actually know what this video is going to look like 
by the time it comes out. But I figured I would do a little bit of a wrap up with some, eh, just talking about some projects that I don't know have even been shown on this video. I need to do a better job of keeping track of what I'm filming. This um, is what I'm going to call completed pinwheel scrap square. I had to look at my works in progress for knitting and I was like, I thought this was going to go quicker. I thought these would make decent seat covers for my car. This is bigger than the seat of my car. So I've seamed these four squares together and they're going to be it. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this at this point. I could turn it into one side of a pillow cover. I could keep experimenting with scrappy blanket projects and just make similarly sized squares and have a scrappy scrap square blanket. That might be interesting to do. But at this point, four squares is enough for me. And part of it is because I, I do keep having to look up the pattern to start and stop certain things, especially if I haven't worked on it in a long time. And I'm more finished object focused at the moment um, because I am limiting the time that I am knitting. So this is going to go somewhere down in the craft room with a note on it, but this is done. I'm going to mark it finished on Ravelry. This is the project that I'm focusing on for knitting. This is the City Limit Sweater by Samantha Guerin. Um, I have modified it. I, new trick for me, put a progress keeper on this sweater somewhere on the 1st of June. And I have knit up to where you split for the front and back. I finished the front. I'm working on the neck shaping for the back in the month of June. So it's tangible progress that I can see, which I think was very helpful in getting this project out and working on it. Um, especially when you're in the giant area of stockinette in the round. So, hooray for progress, which is very exciting. The closer I get to finishing this sweater, the closer I get to tackling some of my other whips, which after this sweater, I will only have four, which sounds good to me. So, I don't know what this hair is doing. So, sweater. And then these two little things are my preliminary swatches for the Salazar Slytherin tunic to find out what weight of warp and weft I would like to weave with. Which one is which? This is on the 12.5 dent pedal for my Ashford 24 inch loom. Um, I warped a fingering weight cotton, fingering weight BFL, lace weight BFL, lace weight cotton and linen, and then did half the warp in a fingering weight BFL and half the warp, um, not warp, half the weft in a fingering weight BFL and half the weft in a lace weight BFL. And then I did the same on a 15 dent heddle for the same loom. I'm liking the fabric of the 15 dent heddle more. Um, and I am leaning towards the lace weight weft. I'm just, I'm waffling in this area. I may do another swatch doing half the warp lace weight BFL, 
half the work, lace weight cotton linen, half the weft, lace weight cotton linen, half the weft, lace weight BFL, to see if maybe I would like this green as a weft instead of a warp. I'm not a huge fan of using a cotton warp at this point. I don't think I'm that great at actually winding on the warp uh, to keep the tension even. I don't think I'm very good at that, which uh, means I need more practice before I really can enjoy weaving with a plant-based warp because there's no stretch at all. With a with a wool yarn it's a lot more forgiving because there is stretch. You can always tighten or loosen the tension so that you can get the shuttle through the shed. So I may do a little bit experimentation in this sort of area of weights um, because I am thinking about this is going to be worn over a an under tunic and I'm likely mostly going to be wearing it in warm weather to Renaissance fairs primarily. So I know it's the wrong time period for Renaissance fairs but nobody cares at Renaissance fairs. You just do you. So yeah, I'm gonna play around a little bit in this area, I think. Um, maybe a bigger swatch with just these two so that I can get a real drapey feel, kind of pin some of my, um, or maybe tack down some of my weaving samples to it to see how they behave. Tablet weaving samples tack down some of my tablet weaving samples to the swatch to see how the two different weaves behave. So that is that. I don't have anything else currently to talk about. No, yes I do. My website. I have made a post about it on Instagram, but if you don't follow me on Instagram, this information will not help you. There have been some changes to my website, not a ton of changes, but I've added some new pages. There is first of all a YouTube video advertising page uh, for any black creators or business people uh, or other persons of color uh, who would like to advertise in my videos. I have created a landing page on my website where you can see all of the information available along with the email address to contact me and all of that jazz. So there's that. There is also now a downloads page on my website. Up there are the smattering of knitting and crochet patterns that I have produced. Um, there's been a whole hullabaloo with Ravelry's new redesign, which is painful to, for me to look at, and I have no known disabilities, so I know that it is a hard place for people to look at. I don't know if my website is any better. My website is certainly simpler. Um, so if Ravelry is not something that you can use right now, and you can use my website, all of my patterns are there. They are all available for free, because in order to put up a store on WordPress these days, I would need to invest a lot more money in the structure of my website, which I'm not going to do because I don't make any money off of these things. I think I've had a grand total of seven pattern sales for the two patterns that I have produced that cost money. Um, so you can get all of my stuff for free on my website. Um, but you know, if you would like to kind of tip for those patterns that are available for purchase elsewhere. I do have a link uh, to a Kofi coffee ko-fi page um, that you can tip me if you really want to. But you don't have to. This. 
I'm clearly not making any money off of those $2 pattern sales. And lastly, there is a link in the navigation menu of my website for Black, Black Lives Matter resources and links. I ended up creating a Google spreadsheet of just resources that people were throwing around, um, particular, particularly at the beginning of last month. Nope. Particularly at the beginning of June. Uh, so I started collecting links and brief descriptions of what things are um, for my own sake of mind, and I've made that Google Sheet available should you need some place to start looking into this stuff. Um, so that's available up there as well. And that... That's gonna be it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.